just about noon. Time to let the chickens free reign. Come here. Got some homemade treats for them. Come on. So I just wanted to do a quick Q&A follow-up to our previous video, which was on hen saddles. A lot of you guys have left a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of why did you do this or why don't you do that in that video. And when I see a lot of comments like that, it means that I'm not doing my job in answering those questions in the video. Of course, we had a lot of chaos going on during that video, so it's kind of understandable. But uh, in order to remedy that, we're going to do this quick Q&A to kind of answer some of your questions. All right, so the first question that we get is, man, that rooster is mean. I couldn't even watch it. He's super aggressive. Now, when I, wa when I use the term aggressive, I did not mean that the rooster is aggressive towards his hens. What I meant is that the rooster is an aggressive mater. And because we only have a small ratio of hens to rooster, we only have five hens to one rooster, the ideal amount is somewhere between 10 and 12 per one rooster. Um, he is aggressively mating those five over and over, which is pulling out some of their feathers. He's actually a very, very gentle rooster to his hens, and he's very, very protective of his hens. What you guys saw when I put the birds in there with the aprons on and he was jumping on their backs, he was not being aggressive towards the hens. What he was doing is trying to protect his hens. He was trying to pull the aprons off. He was trying to figure out what was going on. If he were actually trying to attack the hens, uh, you would have seen a big bloody mess. You saw that I stood in there and I watched and I observed for a little bit trying to figure out what was going on. That's what was going on. He was not being mean to his hens, but I was there just in case that that ended up being an issue. That was not the case here. Next question, why keep a rooster at all? Well, here we are trying to be self-reliant and self-sustainable. In order to do that, we need to have livestock that is self-proliferating. In order to have self-proliferating stock, you need to have a male or a rooster in the case of chickens. Uh, if we did not have him, then we would not have babies in the spring, which means we'd have to continually be ordering from an outside source. On top of that, we like to allow our chickens to free range in the afternoons. We have a lot of predators here, especially red-tailed hawks. And by keeping him with the hens at all times, uh, he is protecting those hens. He is relentlessly standing guard, uh, watching over those hens at all times. And so he is a very, very important part of us being self-reliant, self-sustainable here. So that is why we keep a rooster. Why not separate out your rooster? A lot of different farms like to keep their roosters separate from their hens. Uh, they feel like this is gentler on the hens themselves. We do not feel that uh, this is the most natural approach when it comes to keeping a rooster. We like to keep our rooster bonded with his hens. It keeps the hens warm at night and it, they just like to all be together and that's what we prefer. That doesn't mean that we're, gonna change, we're not going to change our minds further on down the line, but right now we like to keep them all together and like I said, it does, uh, he does offer protection for the hens. Why not call that rooster? We saw this comment over and over and over again. Anytime somebody hears the word aggressive associated with a rooster and they want to immediately chop his head off and get rid of that rooster. We think this is very, very short-sighted. Uh, if you would actually pay attention to the footage, like I said, he was actually trying to protect his hens. I'd hate to think of all the roosters that got called mistakenly uh, because they thought he was a rooster was being aggressive towards his hens when actually he was trying to protect them. We think that he is a very good rooster. We like to sit and observe what's going on before we make any kind of judgment calls like that. Now, does that mean we would never call that rooster? No. Uh, if he would ever become a, aggressive towards them where he was drawing blood, uh, or if he was aggressive towards us where he was drawing blood, then yes, we would get rid of him, but not until we had a replacement. That rooster is too big for the hens. He's gonna break their backs or break their necks. Actually, that rooster is the same age as those hens and he's actually the same breed as those hens with the exception of the Cochin. Why hen saddles at all? They're not natural. Now, this is something that I completely agree with. I actually think they look kind of silly running around with their superhero capes on. It kind of gives me a little chuckle. Kind of like little dogs wearing sweaters. I just don't think it's natural. But in this particular case, and in the case of little dogs wearing sweaters sometimes, uh, they do serve a purpose. This particular case, um, it is helping to prevent their feathers from being pulled out. It is not the ideal solution in this particular case. It is the short-term solution until we get more hens. 
Follow up to that is, why don't you just get more hens? We do have more uh, chicks on order. They won't be here until next summer. Um, we are gonna breed these guys out in the spring, but until then, we needed a short-term solution. Some other people had suggested, why not just bring some uh, adult hens onto your property to even things out a little bit. Uh, in a lot of different cases, that's something that you might wanna do on your farm. For us, we don't wanna do that. We don't like to bring an adult hen onto our farm because it could introduce diseases that we don't want on this particular property. Also, uh, we don't want to breed out uh, different types of uh, chickens other than just the dorking. We want to stick with just the dorking right now. So bringing those on, they would just be an extra mouth to feed uh, and that's not something we want to do right now. So as a temporary solution, we are using the saddles. Why not get a tighter fitting saddle? A lot of other people have seen on other channels or on other websites saddles that will wrap around the chest. We have seen these as well and we intentionally did not go with that style of saddle. Uh, with the reviews of those saddles, they, chickens take longer to adjust because they're more restrictive. Uh, wrapping around their chest. Also, we've heard stories of the chest strap rising up on their neck and potentially choking the chickens. That's not something that we want to have done. Well, the type of, saddle, type of saddle that we chose is the least invasive one that allows them full range to do what they want to do. This means dust bathing, bathing as well. There is going to be a little spot on their back where they can't dust bathe or get to, but for the most part it does enable them to flap it up and to get some dirt underneath their wings and on their back whereas the tighter fitting saddles would not allow you to do that. That's why we went with this particular saddle. Why not put the hen saddles on at night? Well, first of all, we knew there was going to be an adjustment period with the chickens and putting on the saddles. We just didn't know that they were gonna go that crazy. Um, had we known that, we might have considered putting on the saddles at night. Now that you guys know that, because we shared our experience with you, that is something that you guys can do if that's something you choose to do. Uh, but knowing that they would have an adjustment period, we did put them on later on in the afternoon. The saddles we put on around four o'clock. They tend to go to bed, it gets dark around uh, about 5.30. So it wasn't a very long period of time before um, they actually went to bed and everybody, everybody was adjusted by the next day at around noon, including purple. What about all those bright colors? Uh, colors seem to be picked for uh, humans and not for the nature of the chickens. This is actually a pretty good point. It probably would have been better if I would have gotten something in camo or a darker color to make them more blendy. Um, this particular style of saddle did not come in camo or I probably would have got it. It's not that I can't dye them, but there is a benefit to having bright colors. I'm able to identify them from across the yard and uh, know uh, which chicken is which and so if I see one getting picked on by say another hen I know to keep an eye out for her and I know who's doing what and what the hierarchy of the chicken is from a distance So there is a benefit to having bright colors The downside of that is predators might be able to see them a little better We haven't had any issues with that yet, but if that does become an issue um, I'll simply dye them with writ dye And finally, what would I do differently now that I've gone through this process? I wouldn't do anything differently. Um, I tend to learn from my mistakes, but in this particular situation, I don't feel like I made any mistakes, and I like the way that I uh, approached putting on saddles on the hens. I was able to get the rooster adjusted to the hens within about 15 minutes of putting the hens in with him, um, and the, the hens themselves, they very easily adjusted within probably about 14 hours. Like I said, um, it took some of them a little bit longer than the others. Some of them didn't bother at all with it, but everybody's fully adjusted now. Um, if I had a, a coop that was a little bit more accessible to get the, the hens, I might have put the hen saddles on at night, but really the way I did it was perfectly fine. They did freak out a little bit. It was to be expected. Um, and now you guys know as well. Now I very easily could have edited this video completely differently. I could have shown you the saddles, put them on and then skip the whole part where they're freaking out and then just jump to the part like today where everybody's perfectly fine. But I wanted to show you guys what actually happens. And I think that's very, very important. So you guys know what to expect if you guys are ever in this situation. Some of you guys who have been following us for a while know that we very methodically think out any decisions that we make on here. But some of you guys that are new to our channel, um, it might just seem like we went out and got a couple saddles and threw them on our chickens just for some giggles or because we didn't think things through. We actually think things through very very carefully with every single thing that we do we try to understand what the problems are we try to understand what the best solution is and we try to come up with other ways of doing things that might not be conventional 
um, and sometimes conventional just doesn't work. We just do what's best for us, and that doesn't mean that that's what's best for everybody else out there. So if you guys are in a situation like us, it might be better if you call your rooster. It might be better if you separate your rooster. It might be better if you don't have a rooster at all. It might be better if you get more uh, hens. So I hope that's answered some questions for you guys as to why we do what we do. And if you guys like this kind of stuff, like subscribe. We have more videos coming out and hopefully we'll do a little bit better job as to answering those hows and whys for you. Thanks for watching.